This is an interview with Sherm Lovering for the Oral History Project of the East Ham Historical Society, and it is taking place at his house on McGurdy Road in East Ham. The focus of today's interview all of his volunteer activities throughout his life. The date is August 24th, 2023, and the interviewers are Cindy Gopfrich and myself, Marka Daly. Oh, Cindy. Well, uh, Sherman A. Lovering, and the reason it's Sherman A. Lovering now, I was born Arthur Sherman Lovering ah. in 1925. But my father's first name was Arthur. So everybody started calling me Sherman. And eventually, the rest of my life, I became Sherman A. But the, but the veterans have me correct, Arthur Sherman, for, for information. But that's how I happened. I was born in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I was born at our home where we lived. I didn't... I wasn't born in the hospital at that time. The doctor came to the house, which is unusual now, but that's where I was born in Manchester, New Hampshire. So that's the story of being born, brought up, but eventually uh, then uh, when I, we, I, I served in New Guinea uh, and I had the Philippines. So when I got out, I joined the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Now, when uh, did you get out? What year? Yeah. yeah. Now, well, just at the end of the war, and the war ended in, what, 1945. 45. Uh, 1945, and we, we were pretty close to 46. <laughs> 46, that's when I got out of the service. And th then I went back to school. My first job was in Deerfield, New Hampshire. And that was back when there were three schools in each town. The first building, the first building took first and second grades. The other one took third, fourth, and fifth. And to get men into elementary, they 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 made they gave me the job of six, seven, and eight, <laughs> and to get a man there. So which I took, I took the job. And I worked there for about two to three years, and then uh, I, I, they made me principal too. But I, was, I never <laughs> saw the other. I may have never saw the other teachers, teachers, but I was a principal. <laughs> and so then I tr they uh, I I transferred into New Hampshire, into Manchester, New Hampshire, having been born, brought up there. I got a job easily, and I was a Assistant to the principal, assistant principality in the Amherst School in New Hampshire, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, for about. I taught there for about two to three years, and then I got a chance to take a job at Hampton Beach, <laughs> and, and so I. They made me assistant superintendent down <laughs> in Hampton. Uh, Hampton, we had seven towns. We had all of the towns on the coast, you know, from Southampton to Northampton to every Hampton and, and Rye Beach and so forth. We had that. And, um, and I, but we didn't have a class for slow learners and so forth. It was, wasn't, you know, something that everybody had at that time. So I started one. I started one and I tested them and we, uh, we bust in from the seven towns and to Hampton for a special class for slow learners and any uh, in Down syndrome, but you didn't have many of those at that time. But anyway, that's what happened. So that's where I ended up and when I started that special uh, class and in about the, the next year after that one, I got a phone call for the uh, the uh, um, the president of Keene State, <laughs> and he said, Sherm, will you come back and start a program for teachers of special ed? And I said, yeah, I'd love to get out of here. <laughs> I, was, I, I was out of there every night to a school board meeting or a building <laughs> committee meeting or something else. I never got to see my kids at that, at that time. 
So uh, I went back and that's how I ended up at Keene State College. I started teaching there uh, and I taught there and that's where I, um, down in Hampton I may have started my first volunteer because I, uh, the, in the summertime Hampton Beach is loaded mm -hmm. and as assistant superintendent I got a whole month off. You didn't get the whole <laughs> two months off, you just got a month. So uh, I joined the force to the, the help them direct traffic in some place and so I was a police officer for the month, <laughs> uh, volunteering for the month that I was there. Uh, there. You started. And, uh, <laughs> yep, and then uh, when we got up and, and we moved, uh, finally moved up to, family moved up to Keene, in Keene, New Hampshire, and we actually lived in Swansea. Then now I'm at the college teaching, and um, the, um, the the chief of police there lost their psychological te person who interviewed all of the uh, uh, people, or boy, men, or whatever men, uh, who wanted to be, join the Keene police force. So I volunteered to take over for them on that. So that's where I worked for the police, Keene police in there. Any time that they had a person who wanted to be a police officer in Keene, New Hampshire, had to first visit me at the college where I was director of the, of the, the, the program for testing and sort of that type of thing. I was chairman. There was only one person on there, <laughs> but so, I was a chairman. So this was your... Uh, there. No, no, that's a uh, different this one. Uh, this was, so at Keene, I, for quite a number of years, um, anybody that wanted to be a police officer had to first come to the college, and I gave them a test and an interview to see if they were competent enough to do mm -hmm. the job. And that's what I did for quite and a number that, of years. The the, and they that. sent me, when we moved to here out of the Swansea area, they sent me this plaque and, and this letter. Uh, and as to what I was uh, for doing all of that, was my first, uh, other than the down in Hampton as a police officer, that <laughs> was the first the second time I had something to do with police. Quite a few times, I only got one or two people that I ever say, said I, uh, when I wrote back to the chief of police, you know, that I would be leery about hiring this, this gentleman. We used to get a lot from New York City and I always said to him, why do you want to come <laughs> to Keene from New York? You're right. making a lot more money. And they said, but I'll be I'll be safe. probably safe and I'll get home at night when I finish my beat. So that's why they came to Keene. But one I said, don't hire. And unfortunately, they had to go to Conkin, New Hampshire and take another examiner. I said, I will look further than this. But they hired him. And he gave them one trouble a lot. If anybody ever gave a problem, he did. Then the mayor wrote and told the chief that he had to be very careful about not accepting my 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 information that I sent them. Right. Psychological. Then when we moved from there, uh, we left there after I retired in 1985 and we moved here, so we started going to Florida winters. Our program was go to Florida in the winter, come back here for the summer until the crowd and the traffic started in, <laughs> stay here, and then leave, to and I have a home in Maine on Shinpon, Maine, oh. up in, way up in Maine that it's uh, and I still have that. The Florida house we sold. Mm -hmm. We sold it about a month or two ago. Uh, but then in Florida, to volunteer, I was in a, I was in a development called Beverly Hills. <laughs> That'll give you. The, but it wasn't really. But it was a huge development. 
Very. We were bigger than most cities around here. Bigger development. So the, the uh, sheriff of Citrus County, it was where we were, the sheriff gave us two police cars. <laughs> And we were to drive and, and check our development. We did not wear guns, but we did have a sheriff's car and a radio direct to him. And so the uh, one day, uh, or one summer, uh, I'm sorry, one winter while we was down there at Christmas time, I don't know, this was sort of, a, it was going to be a joke. I drove up in, in the in the police car that I was I was doing at my job down there and I drove to the house and I had my wife come out and I had my and I arrested her. <laughs> I I arrested her for, for for being a little too interested in Santa Claus. <laughs> and so we had some postcards made that we were going to, Christmas cards we were gonna send out. She wouldn't let me send them out. <laughs> but just to my kids. But what we did, so you can see me, this here I'm arresting my wife, then the police car, the sheriff's car is right here, that I was driving. <laughs> I did that for about 20 years uh, for the sheriff. I have a question for you, Sherm, because you've been volunteering for so much of your life in different areas, um, community service. Local groups coming oh, together it, for their community yeah. I think, preservation. I, I was very, always very interested in history, very interested. So that's one thing. And then, when I retired and got here, what was I going to do? Oh, <laughs> geez, I didn't want to sit and watch TV all day, you know. So, so, so one thing that I did immediately. Now we moved here in eighty. 1985, 86, said um, I went back to the, I've got the material in here to show you, but it's uh, some forms that you had to fill out. I went back to the uh, college in, in Hyannis, mm -hmm. and I took a course, two courses they were offering free, I think it was, for, for people to become uh, interested in working in the hotels <laughs> as management and doing things. Hmm. I took two or three courses and I passed everything. And uh, when it came time, um, we were all done with courses. They held an open house and everybody came in to see, you know, to hire people. Ocean Edge hired me ah. out of when they had that big thing. <laughs> they hired me because I was also the director of visual aids at the college. I worked there for 10 years. Oh, wow. wow. I, just for something to do. Even and longer. <laughs> I didn't even, I, I took some of the money home, but I left it to pile up. And then when my, when my daughter got married, I had the wedding there. And what I had piled up there paid for it. I think that was about the first wedding that they ever performed. Usually what we had was major companies, uh, the, uh, the sneaker company, uh, oh, what is the main, the big one? Adidas or Nike? Which one? Nike. Uh, Nike, yeah. yeah. When they yeah. came in, they had to come in for one. They came to me because I was in charge of setting up for programs mm -hmm. for the main people coming in, the rooms and what they needed for equipment and how to run it and all that stuff. Um, they, he came to me and he said, no, I want all your workers, I only had four people working for me, but he said, I want all your workers to wear Nike sneakers. <laughs> Uh, and he brought them to me. Okay, slowly. He gave us each a Nike uh, uh, I think on that note, we'll end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sherm, yeah. thank you that so much very nice. one more time. Yeah. God, I don't know. Yes. I guess a lot of it.